Hello everyone, as uh, promised uh, on my community part of the channel on the photo, uh, you chose olive style clean hammer. I'm gonna tie this one tonight and the black one maybe next time. So for this uh, kind of fly, I'm gonna need clean hammer size hook. So I'm gonna use this one in size 12. Now for the body, I'm going to use something that's called nymph body wrap but obviously I can tie whatever I like and it's very cool material since it comes in like variety of colors olive black brownish white green gray and I have somewhere something like burgundy color but tonight as promised I'm gonna tie with green then I'm gonna use something for parachute post it's Antron yarn by Tixtreme materials, very good materials. And then for thorax port, I'm gonna use some ice dub, and this one is extremely good. I prefer this one, even though it's cheap over hairlines, because this one has very fine fibers. And let me show you that like these fibers are super, super, super soft. Let me just focus, okay. So these fibers are, as you can see, like very nice and fine. Now I'm going to show and try to compare this one to hairlines. So uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, I mean, it's impossible to see or well to feel. But this is hairlines size UV in Calibetis color. And you can feel it in your fingers. It's like much more coarser than this one. Um, and that's why I prefer to mix this finer one with uh, any fur I have even though I have to admit this is one of my all-time favorites for uh, to mix in it with other dubbings okay now next one uh, is hackle and hackle I prefer to use grizzly color in this particular case I don't have saddle so I'm gonna use sculpt and I'm gonna use 40 denier uh, thread in, well, this is like a power thread or whatever. And you can see like when you pull it over something, it gets the color from that underside. So let's start tying. So for the hook, as I said, I'm going to use something that looks like this. You can, if you want, bend it here to get a deeper profile, lower riding fly but I'm not gonna do that and now let's start with thread which is 40 denier as I said so because this thread is slippery as I said um, you want to start slowly overlap and then gradually apply pressure until the thread is well secured if you don't secure it well it's gonna slip and it's gonna go off the hook so don't cut it, usually my scissors are dull and I can't uh, and, and I can't do it well. So I'm gonna show you two types of bodies in this case. Uh, more pupa like body, like this, like fat one, and more slim one uh, as, I, uh, as I was tying this olive body. So what I like to do is I like to cut this by an angle, this nymph body part and if you want slimmer body you want to start like this just catch it and then as you apply pressure with your thread you also want to apply pressure on this and stretch it a little bit but don't uh, don't go too much with the, too much pressure uh, because you're gonna cut through it now in touching turns go back okay go back and here you can apply a little bit more pressure and prevent this from slipping out. Now, what I like to do is I like to prepare this part a little bit. So I'm gonna just go over it with my thread uh, with two more layers. And I'm gonna stop right about here. And then, so this is like, let's say one layer. And I can go with one more. I mean, that's back and forth. So. I'm just making slight taper. Now this is the place where I want my mm, 
parachute pose to be so while I'm still with thin hook and everything I'm gonna do this I took two strands put them together and I'm gonna do this it's not a real clean hammer as you if you watched my one of my previous videos it's not a real way to tie the parachute pose but this one works as well and I like it because for this material it works better I don't need to make too much taper in the body I'm not gonna do it with my material so just do a couple of wraps around the post like this secure it well and pull like I go sometimes like a couple of reps and then I pull strong you can go even in open turns up the post and when you pull it's gonna slide down and create very rigid parachute post when you're more or less satisfied you can go down with it okay I'm gonna do a little transition here okay so as you can see it's quite rigid I'm pulling but it's still standing upright now you want as you wind this you want to stretch it a little bit so stretch and overlap like this so overlap and you're gonna see those markings where this is overlapping so you'll know just where to go so just stretch the more you stretch the thinner the body will be so as you advance forward uh, you want to stretch less or you can just go and stretch it uh, according to the like what's happening on your fly just follow your fly now I'm gonna catch it here like so and I'm gonna catch it behind a little bit so in the front and behind and now I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on it like to the front and then stop now when you cut it you want to pull a lot and cut it like this so the excess will be rather small then cover it with your thread I'm, I'm gonna cheat here so I'm gonna form the head as you will see and now I'm gonna make it black like I was using black thread so just let the so let the color soak into the thread now if you want to make this fly uh, a little bit thicker you just catch this nymph skin or whatever you call this material you catch it uh, a little bit deeper in the hook like in the middle of the hook and you just go over it and you can stretch it here and now when you reach the bottom part of everything give it a little bit more tight wraps and then go back okay uh, sorry I have to secure it better okay so this is it at this point I add my parachute post but because this is just for showing you how to do a thicker body I'm gonna skip this step and I'm gonna do it like this so overlap it like more like if you overlap it here and then here and then here it's gonna be thinner but if you do those overlaps more tight you're gonna get thick butt which is good because pupas they have thicker butt than the front part and then as you advance you can apply more pressure and make those overlapping parts more uh, with more distance and you're get, you're gonna get like very nice pupa like body so this is more or less good 
see okay now catch it with thread okay Now it's time to add, usually to secure it a little bit more. Then here I add parachute post like so and tie off the fly. Now let's continue with tying the fly that I've just started. Now I need to add the feather, grizzly one. You want it to extend body or to be same as body length behind that's what I like to do now when you pull those fibers backwards you will see this webby part over here you want to use as little of that as possible so I'm gonna go up the feather and find where it stops but this is not too like high quality feather so I'm gonna stop right about here you want to pull this apart and then you win you want bare stem here so just pull those fibers like so and pull them together so now you have bare stem something to work with and you can go like this so I want my stem to go more or less this much up so with a lot of pressure secure it here and this is something we don't need now this is also the time we I want to add my thorax material and that's uh, like that peacock and now you will notice like you can use very little and still cover the thread and it listens like whatever you do with it it goes around the thread it's very easy to dub unlike uh, most of eyes dubbings which are more coarser uh, not like seals fur but still uh, not very easy to dub with your fingers so this one is already done I'm gonna go like here leave the head not covered like this so I'm gonna go backwards a little bit I like to use a little bit more strong windings so if I'm satisfied with this it's okay and I am I mean there is a gap here but it's not gonna affect our fly or whatever you can cut this but this is going to be ruined by the fish very soon so go upwards with the thread what I like to do, I like to keep my feather in front of me so I can see what's happening with it. And I go downwards. Okay, now it's time to transfer the hook, make it upside down. Okay. Now, even though this is like not original method to tie a clink hammer, I like this one also. It doesn't affect buoyancy of those smaller flies but as Hans told me uh, buoyancy on bigger flies is affected if you use super glue as he's using some head cement to, to secure the fly so I like to do it this way so go each turn below the previous one and go as many as you can and as soon as those windings start to deform and they don't listen to you anymore you should stop so I think that this should be enough I go a little bit down so I, I pinched with my feather and I caught this now I'm gonna twist the thread and I'm going to go with marker over it Okay, now with twisted thread I want to catch feather once, twice, then I pull, you can see that this feather is moving, it means that it's going into the material, then I need to cut this feather 
and what I do I just cut it fast and now with whip finisher I go under all those stray fibers and finish the fly so as you can see I'm trying to catch all those fibers okay this is it let's see so majority of fibers are aligned like they are standing perfectly now let's turn the hook as it should be this way and you can do this like grab all those fibers go back this is the place where I want to cut it looks a little bit high but actually this is a clean hammer it should be it's used for very fast water so it should have a big post so as you can see I made uh, both of bodies and the one in the vise is a little bit thicker than the one in my hand so you can see it better so this one has taper from going from the back side of the hook towards the, towards the front this one has the opposite one this one the right one I would use more for mayflies and the left one I would use more for sedge caddis uh, pupas and maybe some terrestrials whatever you want like if you make black, black body it's just another uh, bug so these are two very nice clean hammers uh, I mean it just details it's not that important to make this taper to be honest I mean both those flies are gonna ha catch uh, in those hatches where pupas are hatching in this size or mayflies are hatching in this size regardless of uh, which type of body you're using it's just food for them that matches the color and the size so don't make it that complicated what you have to pay attention to is the, the position of those hackles they have to be above the hook uh, they have to be flat with no stray fibers going down because they can flip your fly uh, the parachute post has to be rich enough let me focus that the parachute post should be rich enough to support your fly as well as the hackle should be dense enough to support your fly uh, so both of these are very important uh, features of your fly uh, the body as itself as this one is very easy to penetrate through the water surface and it's going to position and sit in the right right in the water film like it sits in my vice right now with the water level just reaching maybe through the first layers of those heckle barbs so this is low very low riding fly and it catches fish even from great depths uh, thank you very much for watching uh, and see you next week